So I don't know if many of you guys noticed, like when you guys walk down the street, if you were to see a guy wearing a dress with full makeup, you'd be like, what's going on? Like, why is he wearing a dress? Why is he wearing makeup? Like, it's out of our norm. It's something different. Something like a lot of people we're not used to. But if we see a girl walking down the street with the dress or wearing makeup, it's like, we're just going to walk past her and we're not going to really care and notice her compared to the situation with the guy doing that. Or vice versa, a girl wearing um, a boy clothes. It's going to be like, why is she doing it? We want to know why, what's going on. So today I want to convince you guys the effects of having gender roles on children early on, which I will be talking about fairy tales, toys, and school. For the, my first part, it would be how growing up, we don't really question it. We just kind of go with it. As kids, um, we grew up watching Disney movies like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White. For instance, Snow White's um, most famous speech is, Someday my prince will come which is something um, that always like I kept in mind as a child. What does that mean? Like something my prince will come. Like, am I just gonna wait around until some guy comes and sweeps me off my feet? But what am I gonna do then? Like, what is he gonna do until I come, well, until he comes and comes and gets me? Um, which is something, um, a sociologist, Liz Gravilla said, fairy tales which once still read by millions of American children say it pays to be pretty, which is true. A lot of little girls who wait around for their Prince Charming to feel the need like, okay, Snow White, the only reason the Prince came to get her was because she was really pretty, she was singing, she was waiting around, and then she needed to be kissed to be safe. While we have the evil queen, which she, she's ugly, she's old, who'd want to save her, you know? Like, so um, that is what Liz is trying to prove. A lot of little girls rely on that, rely on beauty, rely on those high standards of like, if I don't look like a princess, I'm not gonna get my prince. And as well for boys, it's like we have that standard of like tall, dark, and handsome. If you don't meet that criteria, it's like where I go from there. Are girls gonna even consider me? Are girls gonna even look at me? If I'm not that typical Prince Charming that they see in the Disney movies, like how is that gonna affect them as a child growing up? Like seeing a seven-year-old watch um, Frozen and seeing like, oh, that guy, he's the prince. He has to be like, 5'11", and I'm only like 5'7". How am I gonna do that? Or I have to be tall, dark, and handsome. I don't have that look. I don't have the blonde hair, blue eye kind of look that they're going for. As well on in toys, when children are growing up, mainly the factors, especially like when your parents are the ones that are purchasing your toys, they're like, oh, okay, for my little princess, I'm gonna get her Barbies, dollhouse, a kitchen set, especially, um, which, um, my personal experience, my little cousin Emma, she just turned five. For her birthday, they got her a whole kitchen set and a makeup counter. So she can be able to pretend to do her makeup and she can pretend to be cooking. Which I kind of questioned, I told my uncle, I'm like, why would you get her, like, how to become like, you know, like a proper mom, you know, like, oh, hi honey, like, I have dinner ready for you, like, why didn't you get her something else? Like, oh, because that's what she wants. She says that she wants to learn how to cook, be like her mom. Which I'm not trying to say that my aunt, she like, she's like, oh my god, no, like, you don't want to be like my aunt. It's something more like, well, I would think she'd want to like, have something else, like, other toys. Because like my little brother, he does both. He likes um, he doesn't necessarily be like, oh, like, I like only um, Transformers and Legos and everything. He also like tells me like, oh, we should watch the movie Frozen. Like, it's so cool. I love that she, you know, like she fights for what she wants and she doesn't need a boy to tell her what to do. Like, she just needs her sister and that's it. Which is really cool because like, it kind of like broadens my horizon of just like knowing that my brother, he's like experiencing that, that he doesn't have that perspective of just like, oh yeah, like princesses end up with the prince and that's it. It's like, that's all they need. It's like, oh, okay, like princesses don't need the prince. They can have family, they can have friends all they need in order to succeed. They don't need that man to be able to succeed in life. Which is also quoted by O'Brien, which is an editor for the magazine of girls. Dolls in particular invite children to replicate them and image themselves in their doll images. Which is true, um, especially for little girls. Um, when they have little Barbies, I personally know that growing up, like when my Barbies, I would always look at them and I'm like, all my Barbies were just white, Caucasian Barbies. I think maybe I had one Barbie that was Hispanic looking, Teresa, but then that they were all Caucasian Barbies. I didn't really think about it until I got older. Those are the Barbies I kind of like aim for. Those are the Barbies that I got for my birthday for Christmas, which is something like, oh, like, this is a pretty Barbie. Even when I was playing with my cousins, 
we'd always want the pretty Barbie, the one with the blonde hair and the blue eyes. We didn't want the other Barbie. We, it was just something like we didn't think about. It, it wasn't something like we questioned. We just went for it, which is odd uh, because now when we're older, I kind of think like, no, that's not the pretty Barbie. They're all pretty Barbies in their own way. Why do we have that standard of that's the pretty Barbie? Which in reality, we have, there's actually um, a person. Her name is Valeria Lukinova. She's from Germany, and she is considered the, the real Barbie, which she has gone through many pl plastic surgeries, and she's done... Um, she exercises every day and she's on a liquid diet every day for the rest of her life. And she feels like she needs to hit that perception of being Barbie. Because growing up, that's all she wanted to be, is Barbie. Like, her parents told her, like, Barbie's pretty, and that's it. Like, that's all I want to be. And she has that sense down, you're like, no matter what, like, if you're not that look, like Barbie, then you're not pretty. And people have talked to her psychologists, like, like, you understand that that's not the look that you're kind of, like, have to go for. And she's like, no, I do, because that is what I consider pretty. If you don't look like the typical Barbie, then you're not pretty at all. And what is that pretty much telling children? Like, if you don't hit that goal, oh, if I don't get to like grow up to be Barbie, then what am I supposed to be then? Ugly? And finally, um, for elementary, when you're um, elementary school, like me personally, my own experience I had with, um, my teacher had playing cards, and each playing card had um, a, a job role for it. For instance, like if you're an officer, it was a man. If you were a doctor, it was a man. And if you were a nurse, it was a girl. If you're a ballerina, it was a girl. And that's it. And for most of us, when the teacher would ask, who wants to be a ballerina? Most of everybody, including me, raised their hand. Yes, we want to be a ballerina. And then he was like, who wants to be a cop? Only the boys. Who wants to be a doctor? Only the boys. Who wants to be a nurse? Maybe like one or two girls raise their hands because maybe their mothers or they saw someone that they want to be that. Which is sad to think like we are kind of leaning on just to like ballerinas because oh we think they're pretty, they're beautiful, gentle, like that's what we want to strive for, that's what we want to go. Why would I want to be a doctor? And even if I want to go in that field, I'll be a nurse. Because if I want to be a doctor, it's like a boy job. Why would I want to do a boy job when I could do a girl job? So for that quote, I got from a teacher in elementary school where she said that she knows that the people of mine, the student from last year, he did not have typical boy behavior. He didn't play with the boys. He preferred girls. I could see something that in the future he might not turn out straight. Which um, was an article done by sociologist Margarita Jaraki, which implied that the teacher saw those traits that the student was giving. Oh, he was only hanging out with boys. He was, I mean, only hanging out with girls only, not boys. He didn't want to be involved in fights and sports, just hanging out with the girls. So I can already tell that he's going to be gay when he gets older, like just because of those traits, which is, which is unfair because in reality, a lot of people like mostly want to hang out with only girls or only boys. It doesn't mean like they're heading towards that path, like which is sad that already a teacher is already inflicting that role in a child, especially when they're pushing those standards onto them. Like, no, like that's not right. You shouldn't hang out with just girls. You should maybe start hanging out with the boys. Maybe why don't you do sports instead? You don't want to play with the dolls, which um, my personal experience as well, like my little brother, he's 10, um, he always sees me in the mornings like doing my makeup, and then sometimes one day he just suddenly decided, oh, can I get makeup on too? Which I didn't question, I didn't really care. I'm like, yeah, go for it. Like, I'm not going to tell him what he can and can't do. Like, if that's what makes him happy, why am I stand in his way? Well, my mom saw that, and then she's like, no, you can't do that. That's not right. Boys don't do that. Boys don't wear makeup. Like, take that off. And I kind of like told her, I'm like, that's not fair. Like, why should we tell him what he can and can't do in life? If he grows up and he decides to wear makeup, that's all on him. But like, I don't think that's something we should judge upon right now, which he's just a boy. Right now he's into Transformers, to Lego, the Lego movie, all those boy stuff. Like, I wouldn't think just one little simple thing like that could easily affect his whole world. In my conclusion, I feel overall that gender roles to this day are still being applied to children. And I feel that no matter what, um, they are still going to be um, considered until we get to a sense where, like, you know what? Why do we still push it? Why are we letting these roles still like take over um, children's lives? Especially at a young age, like I said in the beginning, we don't really question it. We just go for it. We don't think, why should I like the color pink? Why should he like the color blue? What if I like the color blue? Why can't I like the color blue? I understand. Like, why? Like, we're not going to question it. We're just going to be like, okay, you're the parent. You're the teacher. I have to do what I'm told. I have to like the color pink, I have to like skirts, I have to like makeup. And if I don't, what's gonna happen? 
maybe my friends are going to make fun of me, and maybe I'm not, society is not going to accept me, which is true. When we grow up, we do see that. Society is not okay with it. Society wants us to stick to our gender roles, and if we don't, there's consequences that we have to pay for. So, Alana, what did you think? Um, I thought that the topic was very interesting, and how you like introduced the topic was really good because it grabbed everyone's attention. You do say likes and ums a lot, but um, other than that, you have really good quotes, and I like the example with the Barbies. I mean. All right, well, I thought the <laughs> attention device was okay. Uh, you set up a subject area. I'm still not quite clear exactly what it is that you're trying to convince us of. You're going to convince us of the effects of this. That the effects are good, that they are bad, that they're having a, uh, a positive or a negative impact on us, that they're limiting us in some way. I think you need to be a little bit more specific in your perspective on this. I did think that uh, you had... Uh, an organization in the speech, but it's organized primarily around uh, the categories of proof that you're going to have, um, you know, the, basically the examples that you're using. And you start with the fairy tale things, and I, I understand that, except that it's, uh, you know, a very stereotypical description of what goes on in the fairy tales and how people might be affected by them. What you need to do is show us that there's been a consequence of people being influenced by those sorts of things. So, are women... Um, Compliant? Do they not take opportunities? Do they, in fact, wait around for Prince Charming to show up? Uh, what proof do you have that these fairy tales are having an effect on anybody? By the way, just as a side note, the evil queen in Snow White, she turns ugly to fool Snow White, but she's pretty hot before that, you know. So I don't. I think you got to be a little bit careful about that stereotyping there, um, you know. And and then. Uh, uh, you know, the, the idea that boys themselves might be affected by the same kind of thing. Okay, again, you just ask questions and have hypotheticals. Is there some demonstration that guys or, or girls give up on themselves because they can't live up to those standards or that they spend all their time trying to live up to those standards and they can't do it and that frustrates them and creates a problem for them? Uh, you, you kind of hypothetically discuss what a problem is, but I don't think it gets developed very much there. On the toys argument, uh, we run into the same sort of thing. I think you've got good personal examples uh, here. You talk about your niece getting the uh, kitchen and the makeup stuff, and that, that's all um, you know, a, a good contemporary illustration about how stereotyped uh, uh, people are when they are still getting toys and things for their kids. I, like you said, I think you recognize that there might be a problem here in judging that those roles are inappropriate. What's inappropriate about those particular roles? Because you didn't want to say that there's anything wrong with your your aunt as, a, as a, uh, a role model. You know, she wants to be like her aunt. She wants to, like her mom, she wants to learn how to uh, cook. She wants to look a particular way. And uh, you didn't want to say that that's a negative sort of thing, but I think the implication here is that there's some problem or limitation that occurs, and, you're, and you need to explain to us what that problem or limitation is, that they, they don't consider or other options. They they only marry men who can't cook, so that they'll do the cooking for it. Or they don't, you know, they don't uh, take jobs as uh, doctors or police officers because then they won't get a chance. To I I don't know what the issue is here that needs to be developed. I know where you're trying to head, but I think you need a little bit better proof on the Barbie thing. I, again, you've got the personal examples that you're using there. It's and it's fun for you to build some personal credibility and talk about those issues. Um, I, and I can understand how people might be affected by that. I'm not quite sure that that's a gender role thing so much. Uh, 
that might fit into the racist thing that we were hearing about earlier, that there is a perception of one type of Barbie as being lovely and the others are not quite as pretty. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know that there are, like I said, I don't know how gender role related that is. That seemed a little bit out of that context. And then the you mentioned the real life Barbie, the woman who is uh, modifying herself and trying to live a life so that she's you know just like Barbie. As an example, it's uh, it's interesting and it pulls us in. The problem here is that there's always an outlier, and this clearly sounds like an outlier on this situation. You know, it's one of those for lack of a better word, I'm sorry, if they're living on water or liquid diet and they're modifying themselves to be Barbie, I, if it sounds cruel, I'm sorry. This is a person who's wacko. All right. Do we really want to judge society based on the wackos or is there something that's more effective? Now, for example, if you can show that uh, a particular type of uh, um, job is more frequently sought by women because they think they're closed off from other opportunities. I think that would be a little bit more convincing. Your story about the cards in the classroom, for instance, that's, uh, you know, I don't know how, it can't be that long ago because you were in elementary school, what, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, something like that? You know, maybe this was 10 years when you were, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how old you are. You know, it's terrible to try and judge that. So let's say you were 10 when that was happening, and who wants to be a police officer, who wants to be a ballerina, that kind of thing. If they were using cards like that, your teachers must have had something from 1952 in their closet that they were using. Because all the stuff that my wife uses in her classroom is just so completely different than that, that all the firefighters are women, all the judges are women, all the doctors are women on all of the picture books and stuff that they use in there. So the notion that we're, that's still sort of the, the limitation that's being imposed, it, it doesn't strike me as being typical. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Obviously, it existed in your situation. But where's the evidence that that continues to be a problem? That's what you, I think, need to develop a little bit more. And, and the personal examples are a good starting place, but there's, you've got to have more to it than that. All right. I've talked